Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. Nighttime brings rain once again as we get into the overnight hours. We'll look at that and some changing temperatures as we head towards the weekend. The local four defenders looking into that deadly shooting here at Basketball City in Roseville. The family of the man shot and killed speaking out to us tonight. We have exclusive details on a big day coming up for Detroit Public Schools Community District next week as they prepare to boss up for themselves. Okay, Paula, but we begin with coronavirus and today's numbers. 1,597 new cases have been confirmed in the past 24 hours, continuing this higher trend. And along with that, the state reports 33 new deaths from the virus. And it's that uptick of new cases that was the focus of a news conference today from Governor Whitmer. And in it, she warned the rising number of cases across the state, especially in the UP, should have us all concerned. Jason Colthorpe joining us now. Governor stressing more than ever, Jason, the importance of wearing masks. She sure is, Devin, and because of the numbers you just cited and simply that Michigan is not just back at square one, but worse than square one and also for what's straight ahead, the holidays and family gatherings. At the governor's press briefing where masks will now be worn at all times, Governor Whitmer announced the state is in worse shape than it was in April and it may continue. That's why we are sounding the alarm bell right now. These numbers are moving in the wrong direction. We are at a dangerous moment where uh, there's the possibility of it just becoming community spread that, that becomes out of control. We're seeing that in a lot of our neighboring states. That's what we're trying to avoid. The governor also pointed to new assistance this month for Michigan small businesses, but again called on Washington for help, and this time did not hold back on her frustration over the lack of another stimulus bill. But we have seen the Senate, U.S. Senate leadership in Washington prove once again that they're not able to work together and get this bill passed. Our leaders, from the moment they are sworn into office, have a duty to protect the people that they serve. Now, during the worst health crisis of our lifetime, they're not showing us that they can get this done. With potential super spreader events ahead, like a Michigan-Michigan State football game in Ann Arbor on Halloween, the governor can only ask people to act accordingly. But at this point, I don't think that I can tell you precisely what the next week or the next two weeks look like. It depends on individuals right now rising to this challenge. Without mentioning Senate Majority Leader Mike Shirky by name, the governor did call his comments on herd immunity dangerous, saying if they followed that course of action, that course of thinking, 30,000 more Michiganders would die in addition to the 7,000 that already have. She's also calling on the Republican leadership, urging them to ask Michiganders to mask up her HHS mandates. Reporting live tonight, Jason Culp of Local 4. Yeah, all right, Jason. Also at today's news conference, the state's chief medical executive, Dr. John A. Khaldun, offered some pretty surprising new advice for people who choose to eat at restaurants. Take a listen. Limit indoor dining with anyone who's not in your own household. And if you choose to dine indoors, keep your mask on at all times, except when you are actually putting food in your mouth. And limit your talking. Talking without a mask on increases the risk of spread. If you have a choice between dining in a restaurant or getting takeout, strongly consider getting takeout. The state's numbers show 22 of 393 virus outbreaks are connected to bars or restaurants. Been a long, painful decade for Detroit Public Schools, but it appears the light at the end of the tunnel has gotten quite a bit brighter. As our Paula Tutman reports, a decision expected to come next week will allow the district to finally chart its own course. For the first time since 2009, the Detroit public school system is poised to be released from state supervision to captain its own ship. You may remember the name Bob Bob or Robert Bob, who was brought in as the emergency financial manager of the school system when it was drowning in a tsunami of debt and mismanagement. The controversial appointment by then Governor Jennifer Granholm was made when the district had 172 schools. 85,000 students and a deficit of $219 million, which ballooned to more than $363 million the first year after the appointment. 
In 2011, the job was assumed by Darnell Early, and the district didn't get much better. He left and went on to become the emergency manager of Flint and made that now infamous decision to switch the water system, which poisoned thousands of people with lead. In 2020, with a painful mix of cuts, belt tightening, controversy, and a heck of a lot of hard work, DPSCD now has 110 schools, 49,000 students, and a zero deficit. Local 4 has confirmed that on October 26th, when the Financial Review Commission of the Michigan Department of Treasury meets, on the agenda is a vote to remove the district from state control. From a fairness point of view, um, it, it, it's one step closer to being normal. In plain English, DPSCD will finally have full independent command and autonomy over its finances and structure. Now with a balanced budget, some of the highest starting teacher salaries, and even in the face of juggling a pandemic and three separate learning models, DPSCD will become its own boss. We now have independence, and you know that's a testament, I think, to our strategy, our leadership, but also fiscal responsibility. And you know, Detroiters deserve that. So this comes down to what VT calls defining your own destiny. It's kind of like being an adult and finally getting your parents out of your house because Detroit basically becomes its own boss. Paula Tutman, Local 4. All right, Paula. A teenage gas station clerk is formally charged in a deadly shooting on Detroit's east side. He's identified as 18-year-old Muhammad Hazam. Prosecutors say Hazam watched 30-year-old Joshua Lewis hit a coin machine with a hammer, and that's when he allegedly shot and killed Lewis inside the station. Last week, Detroit police submitted a warrant request that was sent back for more information, but today, Wayne County prosecutors arraigned Hazam on second-degree murder, manslaughter, and weapons charges. He's due back in court next month. Well, a gloomy start, but the uh, the sun is back out, at least for now. Not too bad of a day. Let's get over to Ben to see how uh, what tonight holds for us in the rest of the week. Uh, rinse and repeat, uh, Kim and Devin. <laughs> We're going to do the same thing we did last night, just a little bit later uh, with those nighttime showers and then eventually a mostly dry day tomorrow with some exceptions that we'll talk about. But we're pretty close to average here with these upper 50s. You can see that cold air ready to pounce. That's going to be coming in this weekend, but we've got a couple more warm days ahead of us. Pretty consistent temperatures tonight in the low to mid 50s, and we will be seeing the clouds return. This is ahead of those rain chances, which are not going to start until after midnight tonight. So most of the rain is going to be during the at least calendar day tomorrow. A lot of it's going to be before the sun comes up. We'll look at the timing of that. Showers and thunderstorms also coming Friday, so we'll talk about that, which is going to be the big change going into the weekend. And there are some changes to the weekend forecast. We'll discuss it all for you coming up in a few minutes, guys. All right, Ben, tonight the defenders uncovering new information in the deadly shooting at Basketball City in Roseville. Police say the whole thing started with an argument over a basketball game. Let's bring in defender Sean Lay. And Sean, you spoke to the victim's family. That was my baby, my baby, and he took from me. He took from me, and I can't get him back. The mother and family of 26-year-old Shaquan Harvey, they are in agony tonight. Oh, they just took my baby. Harvey, the father of two boys, loved to play basketball at Basketball City in Roseville. Last night, police say there was an argument over a game. Police say Harvey left and allegedly returned with a gun. Someone not involved in the argument, police say a CPL holder had his gun inside Basketball City and shot Harvey to death. This family says Harvey was also a CPL CPL holder. This family wants more answers about why their loved one is now gone. What about the security? You got all these grown men in here playing this aggressive sport, and you're gonna tell me there's no one in there to check to make sure that you know you got kids in there at that. What about their safety? What if a kid would have got shot? Why they didn't call the police when the first fight. argument and fight broke out in the beginning, especially when you have children in, the, uh, in, the, in, your, in your establishment? Basketball City to check their protocol for individuals carrying weapons in. And we know that if weapons are not allowed, that somebody dropped the ball in this case. And it could have been a different outcome.
We're live tonight in Roseville at Basketball City. What about weapons being brought in? No response from Basketball City. In fact, it appears that they're closed right now. We checked with Roseville police. They said earlier they were holding that CCW uh, holder uh, for questioning, but no update on his status right now, possibly an update from the police tomorrow. But again, this family hurting and asking those key questions. We're live tonight. Sean Lay, Local 4 Defenders. Okay, Sean, a historic shift by the Vatican today as Pope Francis has publicly voiced his support for same-sex civil unions. In a documentary that is premiering at the Rome Film Festival, Francis says, quote, homosexual people have the right to be in a family. They are children of God, end of quote. The leader of the Roman Catholic Church calls for civil union law so that same-sex couples are legally covered. In 2010, when he served as the Archbishop of Buenos Aires, he also endorsed civil unions in opposition to Argentina's plan to legalize same-sex marriage at the time. However, he had never come out publicly in favor of civil unions as Pope. We reached out to the Archdiocese of Detroit for reaction, and they said, quote, to help understand this and other statements, we can look to things the Holy Father has said in the past about the distinction between marriage as a sacrament of the church and civil unions as legal protection for people in long-term committed relationships. Uh, about the sacrament of marriage, he said in 2019, I've always defended doctrine. It is a contradiction to speak of homosexual marriage. Well, prosecutors say the beatings went on for months. Devastating new information comes to light in court as a mother is formally charged with murdering, excuse me, charged with murder in the beating of her twin boys. The new effort to protect you from foreclosure. I'll show you what's being proposed and how it could impact you and your family for years to come. It's new tonight in my Help Me Hank report. COVID numbers are rising across Michigan. We're trying to make the best decision possible. And it's creating enormous pressure for school systems trying to figure out whether to keep the kids home or send them back to school. 